The Biden infrastructure bill comes with a requirement that all new cars come with breathalyzers or other blood alcohol monitoring systems to prevent people from drunk driving. The problem with this not only is that it will add expense to every new car, but also that these systems are both unproven and potentially fatal. See, a blood alcohol monitor is not something that is used very often in vehicles. Typically what happens is if you are arrested and convicted of driving under the influence, you will be forced to use a vehicle that has had an ignition interlock breathalyzer installed that requires that you breathe very hard into it for a few seconds to prove that you're not drunk before the vehicle will start. Basically every new car is now going to get a similar system. Though not necessarily a breathalyzer, it may analyze your blood alcohol content through your skin. The problem is that first of all, this assumes that everyone needs to be nannied in this way, but more importantly, these systems are not well tested. They are new, they are not necessarily reliable, and much more importantly, they could get you killed. Think about what happens if something goes wrong with one of these systems. I guarantee you there will be anti-tampering provisions. There will be stuff set up to keep you from disabling these systems. And presumably, if the system detects anything wrong, it will be just like a security system on a car where you can't start the car if you've tampered with it or, more importantly, if something is wrong with the system through no fault of your own. Picture this, if you will. You are out, and you walk out of somewhere. You're a little bit drunk. So you, pro you go to call a cab, an Uber, whatever. You see, out of the corner of your eye, a group of people, and this group of people make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, and you get the feeling you need to leave now. You don't have time to wait on a cab to get there. You need to leave now. These people are looking at you, and they seem like they're going to come and do something to you. You go to your car quickly and try to start the car, but you've had a little bit to drink, so you are too drunk to drive. But this is not a normal situation. This is a situation where you're a little bit too drunk to drive, but if you don't at least get out of that area, you could be raped or murdered, beaten. You could have all kinds of horrible things done to you if you don't get out of there now. It's a safety issue. The problem is the car is your property. It should start when you decide that it should start. There is no way for the people who put these breathalyzer alcohol monitor systems in cars to know what your unique situation is. Let's take another scenario. Let's take one that doesn't involve drunkenness at all. For those of you who, um, one person on the internet, who's very stupid, by the way, decided to respond to me complaining about these things by saying, well, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be driving a car there anyway if you know that you're going to be drinking, as if, you know, no one ever gets put into situations where it's uh, fight or flight, it's a safety issue. Yeah, dumb people. But let's take another situation that doesn't involve drinking and thus avoids this problem. Let's say you're driving for a long distance. You're driving on a back road, you're going to be driving for a long way, maybe one, two hundred miles, in the middle of nowhere, Montana, God knows where. Somewhere where you can't rely on there being any significant amount of traffic, somewhere that isn't frequented by humans, somewhere where help is not exactly raring to go, you're going to have a problem. There are no humans sometimes for miles around. You're driving. The system malfunctions either while you're driving or you have to pull over and take a quick pee on the side of the road because it's a long trip and you really got to go. But for one reason or another, the vehicle won't start back up due to some kind of a problem with the blood alcohol detection system. So what do you do? Well, you're in the middle of nowhere, maybe during bad weather, during extreme cold, extreme heat. You know, perhaps you're driving through the Nevada desert on a less traveled road. 
It could be hours before anybody else drives by. For all you know, days. What has happened is that you are now on the side of the road with a non-functional vehicle that would be perfectly fine if it weren't for a defect in this nanny state alcohol management system. And now you're stuck in what used to be a normal drive, just a, a nice, leisurely drive through the countryside. Now you're in a survival situation. Now you have to be concerned about finding food, staying warm or cooling off, having water. You are now in survival mode. You could potentially die on the side of the road. And this is all assuming that you didn't get raped, beaten, and murdered by a bunch of guys who followed you to your non-functional car, broke into it, and pulled you out and did things to you in an alleyway. All thanks to the nanny state drunk driving monitoring system that was mandated in the Biden infrastructure bill. Now, on the flip side of this, you will have people arguing, this will prevent drunk driving deaths. This is great because it'll stop people from committing drunk driving. Well, that's yet to be determined, and old cars will still exist that don't have it, and will it really stop people from drunk driving? If it's a blood alcohol thing, they can get someone else to blow into it. You know, there will be ways to bypass these things. The question is, will it actually save anyone? And the answer is, we don't really know, but probably not as many as you would think. But it will cause more problems with cars. It will cause more defects. It will cause more failures. And you have to wonder if that's intentional. Anyway, it, it violates all of my libertarian spidey senses, and it should violate yours too. If you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't be forced to submit to some kind of humiliating testing or to a system being put in your car that prevents you from being able to drive it if it detects anything's wrong. And that detection is not necessarily going to be correct. Anyway, stick with the older cars for now, I guess, but someone needs to unwind this law. Thanks for listening. Have a good one. Sponsor links down below if you'd like to give me some cash for talking about breathalyzers and cars. Be an interesting thing to get paid for, I guess. And uh, thanks for watching. Also, go check out my other channel, which this will be posted on to uh, Jody Spicy Takes. Subscribe over there if you like my political stuff, because eventually that's the only place it will be. Have a good one.